I always like to think first about what exactly are we trying to accomplish when we talk about creating a data strategy. You know, and in its simplest form, we are striving to create value and very specifically business value. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Data Strategy Unraveled. My name is Kendra Reed, and I'm a Principal Data Strategy Technical Specialist at AWS, and I'll be your host today. This channel is dedicated to help customers like yourself understand how to build, leverage, develop, and grow your data strategy. This channel will not only discuss uh, the data and analytics aspects of your data strategy, but also look at some of the things around the people, the processes, the mindset that goes into developing a successful data strategy. And so that's a great segue to kick off our first video in this channel, what is a modern data strategy? And to help with that, I have a colleague here, Kelly Such here to kind of walk us through that. Hey, Kelly, how are you doing today? Hey, good, Kendra. Happy to be here. Great, great, great. So how about you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do at AWS? Great. No, happy to do that. I'm actually the AWS America's data strategy leader. I've been at AWS just about three years now. And what me and my team do is really we work uh, collectively with our customers, large and small, to really help them accelerate value, you know, with an enhanced use of data, analytics, AI, ML, and now, you know, all things, you know, turning to gen AI. Yeah. So we really, you know, double down and work, you know, closely with them and, you know, have a lot of fun doing it in, in turn. Great, great. Yeah, yeah. I I'll admit and say that I'm part of that team as well. And it is a great, great, great time to be in this area and in the learnings that we're, we're having here. Absolutely. Um, so as I open, as I mentioned in the opening, you know, we kind of want to talk a little bit about, you know, what is a modern data strategy, right? So, you know, I have some questions here I want to go through to kind of get a better understanding for our viewers here of what that is. So the first one I have is, you know, what is a data strategy and, you know, how can we think about that? Right, right. And I think it's a great question and it's a great place to start. You know, I always like to think first about what exactly are we trying to accomplish when we talk about creating a data strategy? You know, and in its simplest form, we are striving to create value and very specifically business value through the enhanced use of data, analytics, AI, ML, Gen AI, Gen AI, whatever else is going to come down the pipe. We are really looking to double down and create that business value. But really, a strategy has to be so much more than just selecting the best technology or the tool set for the job at hand. You know, so at AWS and part of our team, we encourage you to think about a modern data strategy as really an agile plan of aligned actions around really, you know, three things, mindset, people, and process, in addition to the technology. And all of these things really need to be addressed collectively in order to maximize that business value. You can't have just one of those uh, components without the other, you know, three in our opinion. Yeah. You know, and then the other thing to add here is I think we really strive to have you create value, not just once based upon a particular project, but be able to create a muscle to be able to accelerate value creation on an ongoing basis. Yeah. Being able to, to take that muscle and continue to grow that muscle, right? To be able Absolutely. to do more things. Okay. You and so it. when we, when we're thinking about a data strategy, is it, you mentioned mindset, people in process, do I, do you have to do it in a certain order to develop a data strategy or can I come at it from multiple angles to uh, facilitate that growth? Yeah, I think this is really important. There isn't a one size fits all approach or recipe for creating a data strategy, right? We have those four components that we believe you need to collectively address. But depending upon where you are in your journey, you know, and certainly that approach that you're trying to take, there's going to be a multiple uh, multitude of options, really. You know, for some, you may initially, you know, think about doubling down on creating that mindset shift. How do you help your organization focus on value creation and using data in the moment that matters? You know, for others, you may be more concerned at first with governance considerations, you know, and how do you free yourself from that traditional bottleneck of a centralized, very heavy handed, you know, data governance organization and really begin to migrate to more of a open data sharing, discovering, understanding and usage kind of model. 
You know, and then we have others that, you know, may need to first focus on ways to promote broader data literacy as part of their people upskilling. So lots of different uh, places that you may choose to focus first, uh, but we always, you know, think you have to look at this collectively across, you know, the mindset, people, process, and technology pillars, but where you start certainly can vary. Yeah, yeah. So one thing that you keep mentioning there is mindset. Mm -hmm. what, what What do you mean when you say mindset? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I think mindset's really interesting uh, because we recommend organizations begin to adopt a product-oriented mindset versus a platform-oriented one. Right. And that platform-oriented one is one we typically see with those older school, more traditional data strategies. I know I fell victim to that in the past, you know, where you'd have to go out really and survey everything before you actually began to, you know, build something. So a product orientation really means that we design and create data enabled offerings or these data products that take into account business and technical requirements in order to solve real business problems. And when I think about a real business problem, this isn't about, oh, I have to go land a data lake. When I talk about a business problem, I'm talking about if I'm an FSI organization, how do I reduce fraud? If I'm a um, high tech ISV organization, how do I increase customer acquisition rates? You know, or if I'm a retailer, how do I enhance my consumer's shopping experience? Those are real life problems that we try to tackle and solve as part of, you know, when we're when we're applying, you know, data products. So, you know, really the it's the converse of the modern mindset doesn't rally around going off getting a technology platform that you then go shopping for users, business users who can then use the platform, you know, after it's been completely built. We really try to turn it upside down and lead with business problems that then inform very discrete business data products that we yeah. want to build and apply in the organization. Yeah. So, so no field or dreams approach. They exactly. build it, they won't come, right? <laughs> exactly. And we've seen that years and years, you know, we've built, we've spent yeah. tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in organizations and single organizations. And yeah. the value is always just, you know, uh, faltered at the end. Yeah, exactly. So, you, you mentioned a data product, you know, what, what exactly would you consider a data product, right? Is it just a, a table within a database? Mm -hmm. Is it a data set? Is that a data product? What, what, right. what characteristics of a an actual data product? No, that's another super question. And one we get from a lot of uh, organizations, you know, data products in general, super overused term, right? And in fact, we use that term interchangeably and depending upon the context, it means something different. So at the most granular level, you know, when we talk about data as a strategic asset or a da data product itself, in this sense, I'm referring to what I call a first order data product. And it's those data assets that are important enough to want to share and allow others to discover and use them more broadly within an organization. So this definitely could be a data set with a collection of, let's say, useful sales data, or it could be a data set with a collection of log data from specific IoT devices in the field. Um, it could also be a collection of, you know, a different table or so. It's it's that kind of very granular level of data that you want to open up and share more broadly in the org. We then have what I call composite data products, or some folks will call those n-order data products. And these composite data products leverage one or more of those first-order data products to build a value-added capability or solution. So you think about the composite data products are built upon those first-order data products that you've opened up and have made for more broader use in the org. You know, some great examples um, of composite data products could be, again, if you're an FSI customer, a fraud detection algorithm. Um, if you are a manufacturer, you know, a dashboard of executive manufacturing KPIs could be, an, you know, a great example of that composite product. Um, if you're a retailer, personalized shopping recommendations, another great example of, you know, using data to create composite data products. So hopefully that helps kind of uh, yeah, demystify yeah, kind of that help. word itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not you know you can have multiple data products building upon data products uh, to continue to create value. Okay, absolutely. Okay. So one another thing that you mentioned you mentioned the mindset, but mm -hmm. then you also mentioned the people and process. Mm -hmm. What what changes are needed there from a you know like a people standpoint when we're thinking about this data strategy? Yeah, I think the first piece and probably the most prominent change that we need to enforce with a modern data strategy around people is ownership. The ownership around a modern data strategy, in our opinion, requires business leaders to jointly own that strategy with their data and tech counterparts. 
it's critical that the business leaders, business stakeholders have an active voice at the table throughout the process. And what this really does is it helps drive alignment and ensuring everyone understands each other's context. So we have the business folks understanding the data in the tech context. It doesn't mean they have to understand how essentially the sausage is going to be made, but they have to understand some context, right? And it's really important for the data and tech uh, leaders to understand the business stakeholders context. So that's the first part. The ownership piece is really critical. I think we also have to think about the building of data products differently, where we are more comfortable assembling smaller, more cross-functional teams to work together. Very different muscle than you know we, we've we've uh, thought about in many uh, organizations in the past. Um, and then we also have to then work to break down the people silos and that information hoarding and adopt ways in which we more easily can share, discover, understand, and use data in the moment that matters. And this very specifically. Um, you know, takes considerable thought and mm -hmm. considerable change management to get people comfortable and incented to share more broadly. So there's a lot of, you know, very uh, important things that would need to be unpacked here and how you actually begin to move, you know, your people and your organization forward in a way that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Especially those that have always owned that data. They don't want to share, you know, they feel like they may lose their job if they start sharing out everything. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, we talked about you know, the different aspects of the data strategy pieces and the things that go into that and how mm -hmm. we can uh, develop that, but kind of what makes this different now, right? There's been different approaches, you know, throughout yeah. IT history, essentially. Um, so what, what about this is different? Yeah, you know, you know, as a former data and analytics leader in the CPG space, you know, I believe we always aspired to be nimble and agile, all of those things that we're preaching today, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, we were constrained by the technology we had at our disposal. And I found it could never live up to what we wanted to achieve, you know, what we actually kind of painted these visions, you know, certainly for our business counterparts, and we always fell short. And so, you know, in the past, you know, we, like I think I mentioned earlier, we had to do our very best to collect all the requirements from as many teams as possible up front. And then we'd go off and build something, many times spending at least a year, sometimes even more than that, before the business would ever see anything to react to. So with the cloud, I fundamentally believe, you know, the calculus has been changed. Now that we have an extendable and scalable cloud-based architecture that supports the addition of those fit-for-purpose services based upon business needs at hand, we now have the flexibility as data and analytic leaders to think about data and analytics in smaller, more consumable, and ultimately more valuable chunks. Mm -hmm. You know, so I know I can be infinitely more comfortable inviting the business to the table now to collaborate and ideate and work very much in partnership with myself and with my teams, because I know the technology is no longer a blocker. Right. And I believe that is a fundamental change that's really, you know, taken, you know, hold over the last 10 years. And so that's what I think fun, you know, was really changed. Yeah. Um, you know, not so much, you know, some of our mindset. I think our intentions were always there or most folks' intentions were there, but we really were always blocked. So I think it's a great opportunity to be able to kind of reset and, yeah. you know, really move forward. Yeah, yeah. Being in the cloud allows you to fail a lot quicker, right? Being able Absolutely. to switch and pivot. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And the whole idea of experimentation, you know, right. and trying something and course correcting if something doesn't mm -hmm. work, you know, you, you're, the technology allows you to do that in a yeah. much more fluid and um, uh, without much, you know, with, without a lot of penalty. Whereas right. before, my gosh, you know, you spent mm -hmm. a lot of dollars up front on yeah. platforms. You spent yeah. a lot of dollars on implementation and guess what? You, you never were going to get it right for the future. Yeah. Things change, things yeah. evolve. You know, we've learned that over the last, you know, several years, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we have to be nimble. We have to be able to react. And I think the technology now allows us the latitude and the opportunity to think different and apply, you know, different uh, ways of working. Yeah, man, this, 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 you know, all of this sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, and like the information that you're sharing here is very invaluable. So mm -hmm. if someone wanted to get started, right? Someone said, hey, you know, this is great. Yep. I feel like I need to start working on our strategy. You know, I'm a CEO, I'm a, you know, CIO, and I need mm -hmm. to work on our mm -hmm. strategy that we have for our company. Yep. How would I go about getting started and doing that? Yeah, absolutely. I think for data and tech teams, building credibility with their business counterparts is absolutely critical for a modern data strategy to succeed. You know, yeah. and I think that's really the difference. You know, again, yeah. the world that we've come from 
you know, in many cases, we've lost credibility, right? Shadow IT organizations have been formed, you know, bypassing, you know, the, the central data or central tech teams. So building credibility is paramount. So I always tell organizations, you know, to focus and not look to boil the ocean. You know, it's really important to take those smaller, more prescriptive steps. And what I will say are usually aligned to a single use case. And you want to start with a single use case to start where you can begin to test and learn. Again, that experimentation and the innovation and you're testing and learning and you're measuring value every step of the way. And based upon what that feedback and what that value is telling you or not telling you, you can then course correct. You know, things that are working, you can accelerate. If something isn't working, you can pull back and go down another route. So it's really, really important, credibility and focus. Um, and I think this will certainly allow you as a, you know, as a data and a tech leader to build momentum, build some trust and build some credibility with those stakeholders that you're trying to serve. You know, and as that reputation and credibility spreads, so yeah. will the opportunities to bring other business teams on board. So really starting small, being measured, being pragmatic is going to be really, really critical to rebuilding trust and rebuilding um, that credibility, you know, that you're uh, seeking. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the macro approach that I would uh, recommend anybody take, mm -hmm. you know, for those that are looking for some outside help, you know, we certainly have a wide variety of programs and offerings available here at AWS mm -hmm. to help organizations get started building out their modern data strategy, you know, kind of from high level, you know, talk tracks around, you know, diving a little bit deeper into a modern data strategy. What are those constructs? We talk about data sharing and discovering and understanding and using data. What yeah. does that look like in practice? We've got a lot of different, you know, kind of talk tracks um, and executive kind of briefing sessions that we can do there. And then we also have collections of workshops and so forth that we can bring to the table if it makes sense. But I would encourage, you know, anyone interested, you know, in learning more about, you know, creating a modern data strategy, getting AWS help, to just connect with their AWS contact to learn a bit more and to get in touch with us. Great, great, great. Um, man, this is this is a lot of great information that you're sharing here, Kelly. We really yeah. thank you. Um, for that, right? And before I let you go, right, it's something that we're going to be doing here at Data Strategy Unraveled is having a little fun time before we let our, our, our guests go is with a, a this or that, right? So I'm going to give okay. you a series of questions and you're going to say this or that or choose which one mm -hmm. that you would prefer out of those series of questions, all right? Okay, aim um, on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so would you prefer glass half full or are you a glass half empty type of person? Oh, I'm definitely a half full. Half full. Half okay. Full. Sight or sound? Sight. Sight. Yep. Okay. Um, last one here. Okay. Would you want to be able to pause time or re rewind time? Oh, I'd like to do both. Rewind <laughs> and then pause. Um, <laughs> since I can't do that, I would say pause. Pause, pause time? time. What? Yep. Why pause time instead of rewind time? Well, oh gosh. Well, I think pausing. Yeah. I like the way everything is right now. So yeah. let me pause it because time goes so fast. It goes by in a yeah. blink, right? Yeah. So even if I rewind time, it's going to go even faster. So faster. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say pause just because pause. it goes by so far, so yeah. fast. I'd love yeah. the opportunity just to be able to stop and enjoy and, you know, savor the moments a, a bit better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for taking the time to uh, come and speak to our um, viewers here. And for those that are looking to get more information around, you know, data strategy and how, you know, AWS can help or just information about data strategy or more uh, videos that we have here at Data mm -hmm. Strategy and Ravel, check the description below and we will uh, be back soon with another video. Thanks so much, Kelly. And thank you all for, for tuning in. Great. Thanks so much for having me.